Hello all. Today we are going to learn the Tourism and Hospitality Services, which is the Unit 3 for Service Management paper, a fourth semester BBA under Bangalore University. So let's get started to learn about Tourism and Hospitality Services. Before we learn into deep, we need to know the definition of tourism. There are different definitions quoted here. One is on the UNWTO and the other one is the World definition. United Nations World Tourism Organization. It states that tourism is a social, cultural and economic phenomenon which entails the movement of people to countries or places outside their usual environment for personal or business which can be even termed as professional purposes. So tourism is a point where the people move from one place to another place for personal or professional purposes. So from this, United Nations World Tourism Organization help us to take down the tourist under three categories. The first category is domestic category which says that the resident of a given country traveling only within that country. Suppose we are in there in India, if we travel within India, we are called as domestic tourists. The second one is inbound tourist, non-residents traveling in a given country. For example, any person other than Indian who is traveling to India is called as inbound tourist, who is incoming, coming to our country, that they are called as inbound tourist. We have outbound tourists. This outbound tourist is residents of one country traveling to another country. So they are the one who will be residing in one country and willing to travel to another country. But here in these three kinds, we need to know that there is traveling is a common one and traveling might happen for personal or business purposes. Next is the definition of Theobald. This definition is given in the year 1994 and it suggests that a world tour is derived from the Latin word tornare and the Greek word tornos, which means a leaf or a circle. The movement around the central point or axis, the meaning have been changed in the modern English to represent one's turn. So Theobald represents tourism where one person is taking a turn to move from one place to another place. Next we have evolution and historical development of tourism. Travel begins in the prehistoric times and that tourism is a recent phenomenon after the industrial period. Earlier, traveling was there but it was disorganized and involved only with a few travelers, for example, friends, for example, traders. It was not considered as business, which did not have leisure as a motivation. Present time, we see that leisure is a motivation because we go on vacation. The stages of travel development has been determined here. The first one is prehistoric period travel. That says that the travel began from an early man from 2 million to 20,000 years ago. Homo erectus traveled in the search of food, he escaped enemies, expand territory, and search of warmth, etc. So these were prehistoric travel period where man began to travel in search of food, escape enemies territories and in search of warmth. So there were the times where people used to travel even earlier than we know. The next time is, the next one is ancient time travel. Travel was confined around Europe, the Middle East, North America and North Africa. During the 3rd century BC, the Greek traveled to visit the sites of healing, gods and their main motive was to engage in religious festivals. So there were some religious festivals happening in the ancient time travel and people from different parts of the world like Europe, Middle East and North America and North Africa traveled for the only reason that's called religious festivals attended. And the third one is Middle Ages or dark tourism. This happened between the 15th and 16th century where that was a time of collapse of Roman Empire where there was a great insecurity in the world due to fear. So people travel to religious centers in order to appease God. It can be Jerusalem or Mecca and other popular destinations 
Hindus also started to visit temples. Main motivation for them to travel was religion. So here we have defined prehistoric period travel, where human traveled in the search of food, basic facilities, and ancient time travel, where to engage in the religious festivals, middle age or dark tourism, where religious was the main motivation for them to travel. Next, we are continuing that is called Renaissance period tourism. This happened between 17th and 18th century, where Renaissance means the revival of art and literature. So we can see that was a focus being given for art and literature. The time was characterized by great invention of art and more importantly architecture. Better styles of hotel construction were innovated and hotels become tourism attractions. The most recognized this time was the Grand Tour which happened in the 17th century. So this renaissance period tourism incubated something called as tourism attractions where hotel and important architectures were considered as a better spots for tourism activities. Next coming to industrial period tourism. This happened between 19th and 20th century where agricultural cities were established and industrial cities was established. A need for labor, rural urban migration, growth of middle class citizens, employed in industries, better education, more leisure time as a result of paid leaves as well as demand for the recreation. That means what people wanted something called as a creation because there were lots and lots of cities grown and rural urban migration happened and people wanted better education, they employed in industries and more leisure time was given to them. So they demanded for recreation. So that was a period during the industrial period tourism. Yeah, I repeat, this happened between 19th and 20th century. Now we are coming to the modern tourism. Modern tourism, they say that it is an activity involving many participants. That means we don't you know, consider only friends, we don't consider only family, we consider many other people as a participant for coming to the tourism activity. More educated, richer markets and it is growing at a very faster rate. Today's tourism involves leisure. That means mainly people focus on leisure time to move on to the tourism activity and it is more organized due to many operations like principals, tour agencies and ground operators. So there are many people who are also involved for tourism activity in the modern era. So this is the sixth one called modern tourism. In this slide we studied about renaissance period tourism where art and literature was given importance. We studied industrial period tourism where rural library and rural my rural urban migration and employment and better education demanded for a recreation and the last one was modern tourism we studied what does modern tourism say modern tourism say that it was growing in a faster rate involving many participants because there were many other organized sectors which were helping us for modern day tourism Next, we are learning about present situation and features of tourism in India. If they give you a question about present situation of tourism in India or the features of tourism in India, you can write the answer. Now, the first point is today's tourism is the greatest service industry and the largest service industry in India, which has a contribution of 6.23% to national GDP and providing 7.8% of total employment. That shows that India have witnessed more than 5 million annual foreign tourist arrivals and 562 domestic tourism visits. That means we had lots of people visiting India and we were also having domestic tourism which is amounted to 562 million people. The tourism industry is also generating about hundreds, hundred billion US dollars in 2008 and it is also expected to increase to 275.5 billion US dollars by 2018 and at growing at a 9.4 annual growth rate. That means today's tourism has grown to a larger extent where we are witnessing foreign people that means foreign tourists arriving in India and also domestic tourism increase which is increasing to a greater extent which has annual growth rate of annual growth rate of 9.4%. The next is Ministry of Tourism as a nodal agency. We have a Ministry for Tourism specifically which is helping us to de development 
and which is helping us for development and promotion of tourism in India and maintains the incredible India. We have a tagline for Indian Ministry of Tourism which says that India is incredible and you have many places to visit and enjoy the art and culture of India. The third one is India is ranked 11th in the Asia. India is ranked in the 11th in the Asia Pacific region and 62 and overall moving up three places on the list of world's attractive destinations. So we can also say that India have ranked high and even in the world it has world's attractive destination. It is ranked the 14th best tourism destination for its natural resources as we all know that India is very good in natural resources and gifted for natural resources and cultural resources. We have been ranked as 14th for natural and 24th for its cultural resources along with the world heritage sites. This has been given by UNO which will tell us what is the heritage of India both natural and cultural which is also rich in flora and fauna and strong creative industries in the country. So we can say that the present conditions of tourism which is showing a higher growth rate of tourism in India. The next is about continue where we have India is also ranked 37th rank for its air transport network. The India travel and tourism industry ranked 5th in its long term that is 10 year growth and it is expected to be the second largest employer in the world by 2019. We can say that India is becoming the largest employer for the service industry particularly in terms of tourism. Next India has been ranked as the best country brand for value for money. That means whatever people are spending in India, whatever foreign tourists are spending in India, we in as a tourist places we are giving the value for money in the country brand index surveyed by the future brand a leading global brand consultancy and india is also claimed to be the second place in cbi that is country's brand index as a best country brand for history because we have a rich heritage history and as well as appears on the top five in the best country brand for authenticity art and culture and fourth best new country for business so we are also bringing up in this that can also be written as an answer. Next, India made it to the list of rising stars or the countries that are likely to become major tourist destination in the next five years. If you ask for a major tourist destination, we have got India also, which is led by United Arab Emirates, China and Vietnam. Yeah. Next, we are coming for the components of tourism. If you say tourism, we have some components inside it. And what are the components? We're going to learn now. The first component is called attraction. And all the components are called as A's of components of tourism. The first A, what we are going to learn is the attraction. There are two types of attraction in tourism. One is the natural attraction. The second one is the man-made attraction. What do we call it as natural attraction? For example, we have mountains, water resources, flora and fauna, wildlife. All these are naturally gifted, which is called the natural attraction of tourism. Next one is man-made attraction. Attraction can be man-made or natural. The man-made attraction might be the festivals what we do, the temples what we have built, the leisure parks what we have, and the historical buildings and so many things, which is man-made. So under attraction, we have two kinds of attraction. One is the natural attraction, the other one is man-made attraction. The next one is our accessibility, that means movement. How do we move from one place to another place is also important when we take up about the concept of tourism because when we don't have this accessibility towards the tourism place, I don't think that the tourism would improve. For example, when we talk about accessibility, everything must be accessible in nature. Yeah, the first one is surface, that is the land travel. It might be on the ter terms of roadways, on the railways, which is called the cheapest means of transportation. The second one is about air transportation, where we can travel long distance. And the third one is water transportation. Even though that's important from the age old until now, because we are doing the continuous innovation in the shipping technology. So the first A is that attraction, which is natural attraction, and man-made attraction is the one major component of tourism. 
Next is accessibility, which says how do we access the tourist place. The first one is surface, second one is air transportation, the third one is water transportation. The third component of tourism is called accommodation. It's not only reaching to the place, but also staying at the place is important in terms of accommodation. It includes food and lodging facility to the guest. It should be comfortable and the services facility should be provided. So there are two types of accommodation that we have here. The first one is serviced accommodation. The second one is self-catering or supplementary accommodation. Serviced accommodation means where the services are provided by the hotel or not just where we stay. And different hotels are established to provide different kinds of lodging and food for the guest. For example, we have five star hotels, we have seven star hotels, we have hotels. All these are called as serviced accommodation. The second one is self-catering or supplementary accommodation. It refers to the premises which offer accommodation but not the same as a hotel. So you can stay but you can't have the... Uh, no. It refers to the premises where... It refers to the premises which offers accommodation but not the services of hotel. It can be on the terms of religion. For example, it can be Dharmashalas, it can be a tourist holiday village, it can be a youth hostel where you will be given the accommodation on the terms of cash per day. The fourth E is called amenities. That's also an important component of tourism. And extra facilities and services provided to the guest while traveling. That means which complement the attraction. It provides visa, tickets, etc. So there are two types of amenities. One is of the natural, the other one is man-made. For example, what are natural? It can be the seashore, sea bath, fishing, rock climbing, etc. It might be the amenities on the basis of nature. The second one is man-made amenities where you have dance, music, drama, swimming pools, etc. So here in the conference of tourism, we studied accommodation and amenities point of view.